Well, hello everybody. This is Barry Miracle and I am honored to come before you today again. If you're watching me on video, you're going to notice a little bit different environment that I'm in. I'm in a school that's been uh, turned into a church in Saskatchewan. And uh, if you hear some noises, it's because I'm in the library slash green room while the conference is going on because I needed to get to you guys and continue on with our um, topic, uh, our series that we're on, which is on uh, supernatural living and immortality. And I am so excited. I've been getting good re reviews from people. They've been enjoying this series of Ionis Zoe, which is uh, eternal life, eternal meaning without beginning, without end and limitless. And we really need to take the limits off of what uh, you received, you need, we need to take the limits off our minds. Our minds are being um, transformed. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are spirits, Lord God, uh, that, that are living in a body. Amen? We are, we are spirits that are living in a body. We possess a soul. And, and uh, we're living in a body. We possess a soul. Sorry. Let's get that correct. We are, we are a spirit. We live in a body and we possess a soul. It's really important to understand that when you got born again, your spirit is the one that received eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that's the other thing I need to really focus on today as well is, is that this is a gift from God. I'm, I'm reiterating this, eternal life, uh, supernatural living, immortality, all these things is a gift. We don't get it by necessarily researching more or, or um, doing more. It's a gift and you need to learn how to re receive the good gifts that God has for you. There's so many things that are still waiting for you to unwrap and, and you need to know that God it absolutely gave you everything. The difference between Christianity and other faiths is this. Christianity, you get everything with Christ and with God, the creator. And Christianity, in Christianity, you get everything at the get-go. At the beginning is when you receive everything. And then it's unveiled and revealed as you go through the process of life. Uh, every other religion is you got to earn, deserve. And this is the big difference. When in, And this is a big difference in supernatural living and immortality is that you get this in in the whole package of when you got born again. So when you got born again, Holy Spirit came into you because of the blood of Jesus Christ, and you became one with the Spirit of the Living God. First Corinthians six seventeen, and and then your your mind began to go on a process. Your soul, your that we're in a fit. We live in this physical and soulish realm, and within this physical and soulish realm, the key is to transform your mind by the washing of the word of, of God so that it gets to such a place where we are in, in total agreement with our born again spirits, who is, we are in total agreement with the spirit of the living God. And that's when you get restoration of all things. By the reformation of your spirit, the transformation of your mind, you are able to receive restoration for your body, restoration for your family, restoration for your community. Every Everything begins to operate as alignment comes. And this is really, really important that we understand that we came into alignment at our new birth. And then and, and let me just read uh, a really good scripture about this. And I, I ended with here last week. And I just want to go back over and start here and then go forward from there. Romans 6, 4 and 4 four through six, therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, our old man, was crucified with him, uh, that our body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. So 
knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that our body of sin might be done away with. How is the body of sin done away with? It's by the washing of the water of the word of God. And which the more you get, and you can study this out in 1 John 2, 27, the more you learn of the word of God in your mind, the more territory it takes in your mind and the more territory it is allowed to take in your in, in your body because the anointing has the ability to come into those areas that have been transformed. When you know you have total accessibility because you've been born again, born from above, born of the spirit, your spirit is one with the spirit of the living God. Once again, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. When you know these things, that's when you begin to speak the situation. That's when you begin to voice activate your harvest. That's when you call things as though they were. That's when you speak the answer at the beginning as, as, it, as it is at the end. Prophesy those things at the beginning as though they're at the end. You, you, that's when you begin to say, I, I, even though I do feel weak, I decree and declare I am strong. That's when you do feel that you are, are poor, but that's when you decree and declare that you are rich because everything is voice activated. How is the, the, the body of sin done away with? By the washing of the water of the word of God, allowing greater and greater levels of the Holy Spirit. Once again, Paul the Apostle one day says, um, um, the things I want to do, I don't do. But the things I don't want to do, I find myself continually doing it. And then he says, ah, oh, this wretched flesh, who will save me? And, and then finally, in the next few verses ahead in Romans chapter 8, he says, ah, but by the Spirit do I put to death the deeds of the body. How do you do away with the, the, the things that so easily beset you? You need to transform your mind into such a way that you understand that you are born again, that you understand that your mind can be transformed. And when you have a, a transformed mind with a restored spirit, you have a restored body and restored world and a crucified body. You put the death, the deeds of the body, you do away with the mortal sins in the body, by the mortal sins in the body, by Holy Ghost. How do you get that? Transform mind. So here, you need to know this right now, um, that we have been united together through the whole process. And I've been asking saints this question, leaders, different other people. Um, what is the doorway to heaven? Is it the decay of your body or is it through the door of Jesus? Come on now. Is it through the decay of your body? Is the death of your body, decay of your body, or is it through Jesus? And I want to tell you today, he is the door. In John 10, he's, he talk, he's the door. He's the good shepherd, but he's the door also. No one can go unto the Father except through him. So life eternal is, is knowing two things, knowing the Father and knowing the Son. You, if you know the son, you'll know the father. If you, if you go through, if you intimately experience, if you know that you've been born again because of the incorruptible seed of the word of God, what it says about Jesus Christ in the word, and you believe it, you apply it, you have now created accessibility. So you go through the door. You, you, the door is Jesus. It's not the decay of your body. But then, but the Bible says, but it's what it's appointed for once for man to die and and then the judgment. It doesn't say it's appointed for once for man's body to decay. Very, very interesting. It, it's once for man to die. So here it says right here, ladies and gentlemen, it says in Romans chapter six, verse five, it says, for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we will also be in, shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. It, for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death. So we, when he died, we died. It's called the Greek word sumphotos, united together. That's what it means. When you were united together, when he was on the cross, you were on the cross. When, when he was resurrected from the dead, you were resurrected from the dead. So it's appointed, he was judged on the cross when his body bore and became sin because of 2 Corinthians 5.21, he made him who knew no sin 
to be sin. Jesus became the curse so that I could become the blessed. He became everything evil so I could become everything good. You were united together with Jesus Christ. So it's appointed for once man to die. When did you die? That's my question for you next. When did you die? Did you die when Jesus died? Or are you waiting to die? Or are you waiting for the decay of your body to be your entrance way into the glory realm? I got news for you. You died and you were judged on the cross. The sin, every sin he paid for. Everything you ever did wrong has already been paid for. The sin quotient has been has been absolutely solved and you are now waiting uh, for for what what are you waiting for are you waiting for god to rescue you or are you becoming just like him first corinthians 4 uh, i think it's 17 no not first john 4 17 says as he is so are we in this world as he is he not as he was you are not a dirty, rotten, scumbag sinner saved by grace. That is not who you are. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus on your worst day. He made him, God the Father, uh, made him who knew no sin to be sin. Why? So that you could become the righteousness of God in him. In him. Jesus made you and then Jesus recreated you you are made by jesus then you were recreated in jesus isn't that amazing you were made our forefathers in this this whole species of beings called humans were made by jesus and then we got upgraded and we are no longer part of the human race only but we are now more appropriately part of the royal race of of god we have become in line. We are living from the palace. We're not living from the pit. We're not living from uh, uh, under oppression and suppression of somebody else. We're not. We're not living in a prison. We are. We are. We've decided to be prisoners of hope. Uh, we've decided to be bond servants of everyone. But that's by our free mo uh, moral choice. We are. We are choosing to serve God. We're choosing to serve humanity. So your, your process of life that you're going through, I'm, I'm trying to unlock your potential. You need to say this, I am a galaxy of potentiality. There, there's billions of galaxies, not just billions of stars. I want to tell you, you, you are more than a, a galaxy of potentiality. You are a, a billions of galaxies of potentiality within, within a, galaxies. There's, there's multiple, multiple plans. I think like some, some are so big that there's billions of planets. That's crazy to understand the magnitude of who we are because we're limitless. Why? Because we re received Ionas Zoe, the eternal which is without beginning without end and limitless zoe life of god this is who we have become because of what jesus did for us eternal life is a gift now here's the deal the whole world thinks it can have it not the whole world but many people are researching in the world that wouldn't even cons consider themselves to be uh, born again uh, believers or, or even believe in God. They're scientists because of the resurrection life that permeated society. They, they know innately because they're spiritual beings that is now there's something on the planet that is different now than it was before. Eternal life permeated the ground, the surface, the arets, the, the land, uh, of, and it's been permeating through the soil of all of creation for, for over 2,000 years as resurrection life. Resur and I release right now into your dreams, into your bodies, into your relationships, into your businesses, into your education, into everything i release the resurrection life of god to come upon you to flow forth from you and begin to permeate everything that has been contrary to you and permeate death 
and disrupt darkness and disrupt all these things. I'm breaking in the mighty name of Jesus, a death culture. Just giving you an inside skip scoop of what, what, I'm, what I'm doing in my life is I'm getting rid, rid of all death references. I am not making, and, and, and stuff like, um, I, it's my hill to die on. Stuff like I, uh, the bucket list, or you're killing me over here. And I mentioned this a few episodes ago, but I wanna tell you, I am transforming my thoughts. I am taking them captive and I'm not gonna make death references. And it, there's all kinds of death references. Like like you make things like this. My, my dad had arthritis, so I'm gonna get arthritis. Or my mother had hard times in, in, in um, pregnancy, so I'm gonna have that. Not me, because I have different plumbing, but anyway. That made a few years laugh, but um, but uh, you understand what I mean. You you got to stop agreeing with death culture. If I mean, I've seen so many skulls in different uh, uh, fashion um, people that I'm not going to mention names, but it, but all kinds of skulls and this not, and 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 death is um, interesting because it was Jesus dying on the cross that gave me life. So there, and there is a beautiful death when we die to ourself. Uh, we we are we, we're dying to our own dreams. We're dying to the flesh. We're putting to death the deeds of the body. The, those those are those are different. Those are death leading to life. And I want to let you know that everything you are facing right now had life in it before death happened. Everything you're facing right now. And I'm about to do a, um, and you probably, if you're listening to me, you probably know that I'm doing a, um, uh, an Ascend the Summit leadership experience, and it will be happening in just a few days after you're listening to this, or it might be another time that you're listening to this later. But I'm, I'm doing this, and one of the things I studied was Mount Everest. And the beautiful thing that I discovered is that, and God gave me revelation, because the largest mountain in the world is called the tallest mountain in the world is called Mount Everest. It's 20, 29,029 feet. Very interesting. And apparently, according to my buddy, Troy Brewer, that 29 represents something about climbing mountains is in, in the number numerical uh, definition. A anyway, so I, I'm, I'm just, God began to reveal to me that, that he named every mountain that you will ever face before time began. He already put things in place. There, your mountain that you are facing already had an anointing put in the middle of it, on, on it and on the way up into it and, and dominating it. And it's called Mount Everest. I'm telling you, he put eternal life into this world and then he spiked it when he got raised from the dead and he released it. Life, eternal life, the, the pathways. And I, I, I think I talked about them last week, how there's the, the in Isaiah um, um, 35, no, 35, nine. And then in Job, I think it's 28. It talks about the, the paw, the, the path that that the righteous can be, that are walk upon or the highway of holiness and that's they go down upon is that it, it, there no ravenous beast with there no no paw of destruction no eye of the vulture no eye of death uh, is on that path there god set these paths up ahead of time according to ephesians 2:10 these are paths of life when you tap into the dream of god for your life when you when you're obeying god and you've laid down your own agenda you re, you are receiving eternal life. There is eternal life that is wants to flow through you, but it's something that doesn't just automatically consume you. You need to know that eternal life needs to be possessed, uh, believed in, and then operated in. Amen. Okay. So I'm just going to move on. And the process of the new age, the process of becoming the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, is actually uh becoming a new creation with christ and according to what i've been just sharing with you but also according to second corinthians 5 17 that says all things have passed away and all things have become brand new 
Behold, all things have become brand new. Let me read that again. All things have passed away and behold, all things have become brand new. I don't feel brand new. That's because you have to manifest your spirit. You got full of God the day that you accepted Jesus Christ. It says in the Bible, the greatest man that was ever born underneath the old covenant was John the Baptist, the greatest prophet, the greatest, the greatest leader, the greatest man, the greatest person ever born underneath the old covenant, underneath the mosaic, underneath the, the old covenant before Jesus brought was John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the greatest. This was the red. So this is what Jesus said. But then he says, but he who is least in the kingdom is greater than he. So. When you begin, when you get saved, you become one with the, with the creator of the universe. When you get saved, you become one with the spirit of the living God. When you get saved, you become one with, with, with the triune Godhead. You become one. So that's what makes you greater than, but now you have to have a life of discovery. And some people will have it a little quicker than others, but you need to know that the potential is available to you. And you need to understand that all things that have passed away, all things. Okay, let me read again. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, all things have passed away. All things have passed away. Sin, the, 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 the payment you owed has passed away. You need to understand that all things have passed away. And it says, behold, all things are brand new. I have resurrection life. I am walking in resurrection life. I am ever increasing in my faith in what Jesus has done. Once again, eternal life is not researched for or something that you do to get it. It is something that you position yourself to receive it. And then when you receive it, you lay hold of it. He's passing goodness, the glory in front of you. His, go his glory, his goodness is passing all around you and is in you. You gotta manifest it and then you gotta lay hold of it. And sometimes you gotta let go of some old things so you can latch onto what God is doing right now. Amen. You will. Not, I wrote this. We're just. I just came out of a word, uh, a, a, a service, and I wrote this down in the service. Um, if you can't see what God has done in the past, what Jesus has done for you, you will never be able to see what He is currently doing. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So the process is called sum photos, where you are united together through the whole process. Which means uh, we were also united together with Iona's Zoe, Zoe life of God. We were united together with the eternal life flow of God. We were united together and placed in heavenly places right now. Say, I am seated in heavenly places with God in Christ Jesus. We have be become a, a, a child of God. Uh, we are ruling and reigning with Christ Jesus now. We are living from righteousness in Christ Jesus now. We have become co-heirs with Christ Jesus now. What I am not is found in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. And I'm going to break this. And I, and I, I went over this a, a, a number of months ago when I began to talk about uh, what it is to be a new creation. Really good uh, um, series that you guys need to go back to if you haven't listened to it. Uh, so Jeremiah 17, 9. So all those things I just told you are plus, 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 plus. You're a, 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 a billion soul. You're a billion potential uh, uh, galaxy. <laughs> you are, you, there's so much in you and so much around you and so many resources that you, could, that you should be operating and so much revelation that it just blows your mind. You need to ask for grace for God to receive. And I do. And I just decree and declare a grace over you to receive everything that God has for you um, in this season and what you came into this realm to possess, dominate, and make the kingdoms of this world the kingdoms of our God. So uh, I want to tell you that um, you are not, though, Jeremiah 17, 9. The Bible says there that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. We have preachers, ladies and gentlemen, that are preaching that like it is a doctrine for now. That was underneath the old covenant. What I'm, what you need to know is, I'm just going to read some, some of my notes. Desperately wicked means in the or original language, incurably sick. So I am not incurably sick and my heart is not evil. I have a brand new heart. I don't have a renovated, fixed up or fabricated heart. I have a brand new heart. 
See, so what God did, he didn't come down to fix your problems. He came to give you something brand new that has never been before. Jesus was the firstborn of many brethren and you became in that uh, lineage. You're not underneath the lineage of Adam. You're no longer subjected to the curse of the law. You've been bought with a price. You're no longer under a curse. You're under the blessing. And this is our confession. This is what you need to renew your mind with. This is what gives you potential to live the Ionis Zoe life, the eternal life, the life that does uh, has the power that of there's no beginning, no end, and limitless life of God. Hallelujah. You are not a dirty, rotten, scumbag sinner saved by grace. I have been, I was saved and I'm so grateful that I'm saved. I'm so grateful for God's amazing grace when he made me a brand new creation. I have become part of the royal race. As we think, as we begin to think about supernatural living and immortality, eternal life, we must consider what Jesus did to provide us for that everlasting life. And I, I've shared on that a, a, a bunch. So I just want to end. I'm sorry about all the noise in the background. We are in a school and I'm in the, the green room here in the library at this conference. But um, anyway, so Second Corinthians, and this is, this is where I want to leave us and I want to tee up because I think I'm bringing in one of my special guests this coming uh, week after this. So turn with me to, if you can, Second Corinthians 5 to uh, chapter 5, verses 2 through 4. So 2 Corinthians 5, 2, 3, 4. For we have, uh, sorry, so we know that if our earthly house, this tent, so this is your earthly house, your tent, you are a spirit, you live in a body, you possess a mind, a will, and emotions called your soul. If this tent, this house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made of hands, eternal in heaven. In the heavenly realms, where is heaven now? Heaven is on the inside of you. Is there a place? Yes, heaven is a place, but heaven is on the inside of you. You got to stop thinking so linearly. You got to stop thinking in, in, with the limitations of time and space. Say, Father, help me think eternally, not just linearly, according to circumstantial evidence in the temporary realm. This is a prayer that you need to pray. You need a revelation on these things, okay? So verse two, it says, for in, in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. So we, if we put off this tent, you know, the Bible says, if you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. So there's a tent that is waiting for us that's not made with hands, that was spoken into existence in, in heaven. Okay, where's heaven? I, multiple places, because there's 8 billion people. And there's heaven on, on the inside. He, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11 says he put eternity into the hearts of men. Not, not in the hearts of Christianity. Not in the hearts of Christians. In, in the hearts of men. This is this is old covenant. This is before you could get saved. Before Holy Spirit had access, accessibility because of the blood of Jesus Christ. He put eternity in the hearts of men. But he did not. You don't have accessibility into that because the blood wasn't shed the accessibility was not granted but we have full and complete and total accessibility because of what jesus did so for in in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven if in if indeed having been clothed we shall not be found naked for for we who are in this tent groan okay the whole earth is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. See, that's me. So I'm going to read that. Verse 4 again. You ready? This is, this is the mic drop. Boom. Boom. Hallelujah. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed. We won't want to put on, we don't want to put off this tent. But further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. This is what it says. This is the truth on eternal life. My body, I have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, 
dwelling in me. The Bible says that that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body, that that same spirit shall also quicken your mortal body. Your mortal body needs to be swallowed up by life on a regular basis. You are not a dirty, rotten, scumbag sinner saved by life, uh, saved by death. Uh, Save, uh, you're not a dirty, rotten, scumbag sinner saved by grace. Come on. You are the righteousness of God. You were that. That's not, don't ever say you're not worthy. Don't ever say that you, you're, you're a sinner saved by grace. That's who you were. You got to identify, get the death culture out of your mentality. The only death you want is death to flesh, death, death to distraction, death to, to self-ambition, death to these things. And when you, when you, when your body is subjected to the Holy Spirit on a regular basis, it is easy to say yes. And when you say an eternal yes to God, you will automatically be busting up every, every no that's coming against you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. This is, this is one of the major scriptures that you need to study in this season of your life. You need to look at uh, 1 John 4, 17. That says, because he, as he is, so are we in this world. And is he resurrected? Is he ruling and reigning? This is, you are to take dominion. Dominion, you are, you are to uh, make the kingdoms of this world, the kingdoms of our God. You are to live a long life. 70 years was a curse. 120 years was part of a curse. These were not, these were not bonuses. Oh, I'm guaranteed. I used to say it all the time. If it's if it's if I'm not 70 years old, don't pull the plug. If if I'm if I'm not 70 years old, uh, it's not my appointment. I am to be here. The Bible says I got 70 years, three score and ten. But that is under the curse, and we've just been satisfied by get, making this. Oh, I made it to 70. Don't rejoice that you made it to 70 only. Be thankful you made it to 15 uh, or, or 60 or 50 or whatever it is or 90, whatever. Just be thankful for that. But don't be limited by 70, and ladies and gentlemen, stop being limited by 100. I'm breaking the mold. We're breaking the mold today. We are coming against limitations to eternal life. And we need to understand, and we need a few people that will believe with me that we become the 10 second, 100 meter dash breakthrough or the four minute mile breakthrough. Somebody's got to break through. Somebody's got to begin to believe this. There are other people that are believing in in immortality that you do not have to die sorry you had to die and that's how you got etern eternity but you died when jesus died you, you don't have to have a decay of your body there are many people that are listening to me today that are suffering because they have lived too long with the spiking of chemicals in your body because of trauma, and you lived in, in Mount Everest, in my studying of Mount Everest, you can live at 17,000 feet. It, it's less oxygen, it's difficult, and everything, and it's cold and it's frozen, all that kind of thing. But if you go above 17 and you begin to uh, go above uh, into 18,000, feet above the sea level is when your body begins to decay. Your body has been decaying because I think it's cortisol. That has been, it, cortisol gets you up in the morning. Cortisol is good for you. And it just, it makes you sharp when, in, in, when you're in, in, in a dire straits or you're in a, a you know, dark alley and you're just, you're just ready for it, you know, and, and all these endorphins get released in you. But when you live there because of trauma, when you live too high, into those levels of, of chemicals that have been released in your body, your body begins to decay. There are things that happen that you can, you, it, but this is why you need to li live a life of peace. I, I, am, I am able to live in the midst of the 18 level toxicity where the body is trying to decay. I'm able to live in it. Why? Because I'm clothed with the glory. I put on the glory of God on a regular basis and I'm breathing heaven in the midst of an atmosphere all around me of toxicity. Transform your minds. Ladies and gentlemen, get into the word of God. Find out who you, who you are, who you become. Go to, go, you know, research out. You're on a very miracle uh, 
Well, you're up. You're probably listening to "Wake Up Into Your Dream" uh, podcast by Barry Miracle. You're watching me on watching me on YouTube, but you can go to Barry Miracle and you can re- you can research some things there and get some good um, dialogue there and some good um, uh, just some good doctrine to to believe to believe on. And you can go back through the different other podcasts, and I have a number of podcasts now up on YouTube and different other preachers and stuff. And it, it, we need to we need to be believing in life and life that much more abundantly. Jesus came to give life. The enemies come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come to give life and life much more abundantly. We've hardly tapped into life, let alone abundant life. We have barely tapped into what Jesus did. And he says, greater things will you do. Will you believe with me for eternal life? One of the things that we can do is believe that we will live beyond 33, that we won't die on a cross like Jesus did, that we can participate, we can believe, and we can receive everything that Jesus had for us. And I just released that to you today. Once again, go to barrymiracle.ca if you want to sow a seed. So you want to you want to see this continue. You want to see us growing. You want to see us going different other places. I have, I, I'm, I'm supposed to go to Uganda. And I need to almost pay for the whole campaign. And I need you to be believing with me. And if you want to sow into Uganda, into the people there, I got to really put things into play. I got to begin to, I got, I, I got to get some uh, initial finances to come in. There's different other things that we have to uh, pay for in this season. If you want to sow a seed, that would be wonderful. You want to contact me in a different way. You want to sow a seed into our lives. But you can go to barrymiracle.ca and you can give through PayPal there if you want to. Uh, receipt because it goes to my ministry, not directly to me. And you can put on there whatever you want that for. Um, but I'll tell you, we, if if it's not Uganda, we will use uh, the finances to you know be, support us so that we can keep going. I got five kids. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm, I'm I don't usually put out a plea like that, but we got so many different things we have opportunity to do, and everybody can't you know, pay us to, to the level or so into our lives. They don't pay us. They so into our lives um, so that we can keep going. Okay. I never ask for uh, anybody to give us anything before I come and minister. We just leave it up to God. And God has been so faithful. And you know, if you're not sowing into us, that's fine. I'm going to keep sowing into you guys, believing with you guys, because this is my heart. I want to see you guys live the abundant life that Jesus paid for. And it's time, ladies and gentlemen, that Jesus get gets what he paid for. Amen. Bless you guys. I'm so glad you're listening on this. Share this around. Give me five stars. Make some comments. And love you. Bye for now.